Oh, hi guys! Uh, welcome to the Creator Commentary for Episode 2 of Versus Valerie. Um, there's three of us here on a really nice couch. My name is Steph Callender. I'm Simon. And I am Mike Fly. Uh, I am the producer on the show and I co-directed with Simon and co-edited with Simon. And Steph is the head writer of the show. Uh, and Simon also wrote for the show as well. So why don't we start right into episode Let's two? Do it. Yeah. Star Wars. This is Mother Turn of the Jedi versus Valerie. This is the uh, obviously the climax scene where Luke stands off against the Emperor in Return of the Jedi, throws his lightsaber away. When he basically I, says all what she just said. Yeah, when I was when I was writing this scene, I literally watched that scene at least five or six times to try to get, maybe probably more, to basically parody every single line. Yeah, yeah. Um, the uh, the pillars behind Mother just happen to be the lights at um, at at Earth where we shot this uh, episode, and they made these really cool lighting effects for us that worked out really nice. Like that sort of looks Death Starry. Don't you think? Yeah. yeah, it's a little bit. There's some columns on the Death Star for sure. <laughs> I wouldn't even have thought that this was the restaurant. The, re the whole episode takes place in a restaurant. I wouldn't even have thought that this is the same restaurant. Oh, it. it well, I think it's because uh, in the in the it's teaser close -ups we too. went with blue mediums. Yeah, and and then for the restaurant, green. actually, we the green wasn't uh, necessarily totally intentional either. No? No, we ended up uh, getting a couple LED panels uh, that we borrowed uh, from a friend, and uh, they were just, um, like, they're fairly cheap panels, so when next to all of our actual proper lights, they would just give this green light off, mm. and there was no way to color correct it on set, so we were like, well, we'll just make it everything in the background green. It's nice. I think it works. Earth yeah. is a kind of, like, the dark tones of the restaurant sort of lend themselves nicely to it. Earth is actually an amazing Who did this? restaurant. Uh, Larry, and though I, I, I don't want to mess up his last name, but he's in the credits. Um, and he was awesome. Uh, I asked him for like an apocalyptic scenario, uh, yeah, and he that was what he came up with, and I'm really happy that we were able to do it. I love that line. You'll be dead or worse, broke. <laughs> and then here we have Corey Vidal all of a sudden, which is fun. Uh, he's from uh, he's Apprentice A on YouTube. Uh, he's a little bit of a YouTube mogul. He just uh, did a documentary about uh, what it is to kind of be a YouTuber, and he re-interviews, you know, a million famous YouTubers. I'm really excited to see that. Uh, and he was uh, able to come down and shoot with the day for it with us uh, with uh, Craig Benzine, who's Wheezy Waiter on YouTube as well. They were totally fun to hang out with. And, of course, both are huge Star Wars nerds, and it was really awesome that we were able to, like, incorporate them in this episode, which is our Star Wars episode. And that Craig got to play a waiter. <laughs> <laughs> Very unusual. <laughs> Weezy Wazer cat. Weezy Wazer I don't think he'd. Waiter. I don't think he'd be a very good waiter. <laughs> I think he was at one point before he decided yeah. to never do it again and only do YouTube stuff. Um, and he's it's one where, of the... I think it's where he started wheezing for the first time <laughs> in his life. He's definitely um, one of the most prolific YouTubers out there. Uh, de his stuff is definitely worth checking out. <laughs> Um, at this, uh, the coolest, for me, the coolest part about this episode is all the sound-alike music, uh, oh, for Waylon. Star Wars. That's, that's all Waylon Mickey. Uh, he went, uh, and, you know, we had, we, we do a rough cut of the episode. We have to use temporary music, so we would try and use temporary music from the actual source material we were referencing. And, uh, Waylon would actually go and recut. Uh, like he would take the music we'd have there and he'd rearrange things and kind of come up with his own compositions that were thematically similar, which is really cool. Hey, this, uh, this shot actually is a bookend to the shot in episode 11, where it has the young girl turning. That's correct. The exact same shot. In the restaurant. Sure. Pretty cool. Sorry, I just noticed something <laughs> I had to bring it up. <laughs> wow, we're really smart. All the food uh, that you oh, see was all brought in um, by our uh, props person. I think it was Ray at the yes. time, right? Yes, Raymond? it was. Ray Bazinski, I think his last name is. And he, he brought in a huge cooler just full of food. And, uh, I mean, the, all the wine isn't really wine. It's all different Apple juices. Juice and, and 
grape juice. You never think about that when you're watching a movie, that the kitchen of the restaurant is probably closed and all the food has to be brought in. This is true. And these guys back here in the table behind um, Corey and Mother, or I guess um, D uh, Garth and Mother, uh, they're actually a, a boy band from Chile named Freens, uh, and they are, uh, they do some amazing, like, crazy high production uh, pop music. But they just happened to be available and they wanted to hang out, so we sat them at a table and they just kind of like s quietly talked about, you know, living in Canada and uh, and trying to make a go of it as a boy band. I mean, you look at them and you're like, oh yeah, those guys are so cool. <laughs> <laughs> I think they were also, weren't they also extras in episode 12 too, I think? Uh, I believe they do come back. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Or episode 11 in the in the restaurant. Yes. At, um, where did we shoot? At Gladstone? Oh, the Gladstone? Yeah. yeah. Indeed, and uh, this is a fun shot too. Uh, we tried to keep the camera moving in here as much as possible. Connor. Oh yeah, Connor Brebery. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he's very funny. He's on main stage at Second City right now with um, with uh, Kevin Vidal, and uh, he's hilarious. That's Real my stuff. old kitchen, or that's my living room. We're that's here right now. Right now. <laughs> <laughs> We're sitting on that couch. <laughs> all the set dressings to make the apartment look more feminine are all just my scarves thrown on things. <laughs> Mike was like, bring bring some stuff to make it look girly. So I bought a few throw pillows, Hannah Montana throw pillow in the background. <laughs> and uh, is that, why, is that your scarf over the lamp in the back as oh, well? Oh, it is. <laughs> <laughs> That's what a girl's apartment, uh, approximation of yeah. a girl's apartment, which is not true at all, but true in the movies. Indeed. And this is, uh, this is like a great example of the dolly move. Uh, like we, we had to keep always moving the camera on the dolly, which made it these days really long for us. But I think when you set an, an, like a, an episode of something in a restaurant, you kind of have to, to Yeah, everybody's moving. stationary. Yeah. You've got to be mobile. Unless there's a reason for... That, I painted that tape. <laughs> oh, the, is the red stripe on his oh, red stripe? Right. Or I colored it with a Sharpie. <laughs> <laughs> that, uh, that shirt and, and vest of his I got at Valley Village, and the shirt um, was just a polo shirt that I cut into that shape. <laughs> and the, the lady dress I had to borrow. This is Danny Menlo, a uh, comedian, but also our transportation coordinator. And there's that moment where he waves the $5 bill. <laughs> and... Like sitting behind the monitor, I just lost it every time. Like, yeah. why? Why is he displaying the tip to everyone? He's just at the doing table? something weird for no reason. It's just funny. <laughs> the guy that we originally wanted for that role, sorry, Danny, uh, you were a great replacement, uh, was the actual flower guy into who everybody knows, who goes around to bars in Toronto. He's East Indian or he's, he's Asian, South Asian, and he's got a mustache and he's slightly balding and he just walks around with bouquets of roses trying to sell them. And I'm like, we got to get that guy. Because well, if we, it's if Toronto is one of the characters in our show, everybody's going to recognize that guy. Mm -hmm. I actually ran into him on the bus and had actually booked him to come to be that in the show. But for some reason, he just didn't show up. Yeah. Um, so unfortunately, we had to throw Danny in. And Danny's hilarious as well. So we lost that little bit of Toronto icon, but we made up for it with uh, Danny's ridiculous $5 bill flashing. And eyebrows. <laughs> <laughs> Shelly... Shelly had seen um, Star Wars a long time ago, uh, but it not in recent times. And this, her Emperor uh, impression was pretty good, though. I thought. Oh yeah, Simon. I'm not, sure, I'm not sure she's ever seen Return of the Jedi. Oh really? Yeah, I think she was like just based on our direction. She was just rolling with that. She did a great job. Yeah. You did a great job coaching her. That this, that, uh, that smug look that he gives her uh, is great, and I uh, I really love that line uh, that uh, what is it that, that that's how that's how a lady keeps her figure. Is uh, that an ad lib from him? No, uh, well we we were on set and I was like, how do we make him just a little bit more of a prick? And I'm like, oh, he just needs to comment about her weight. <laughs> oh yeah. Yeah, and he, he was like, really? It's, you it's, want me to say it's that? not even about Val. It's just about women in general. It's <laughs> like this guy is even a bigger douche. Than, than I thought. When I wrote this episode, I was like, what's the douchiest thing you can do and be rude to a waiter? Number one. Three hours of makeup for that last shot, by the way. Uh, <laughs> we used it for a total of four seconds. There's more hearts than there is him in that crazy makeup. Yeah. Oh, but he really loved being pig face guy. Well, you know what we, we what we should do is because we shot him in that makeup doing a whole bunch of different improvised takes of that line and like saying things like, you're a douche. 
and things like that. We need to release that footage at some point because it's so funny. <laughs> He's uh, and, and He's nobody great. thought about fixing Corey's tie in this episode. Like, What's wrong with his tie? It's just it's loose and it's just. Oh it's yeah, Shelly of, mentioned that. Yeah, he's the, the kind of guy who needs to like. He should have a tight tie. You're right. This uh, that was that's Kaya's line right there. I remember use the fork. We were, yeah, mm-hmm. use the fork. Uh, when we were doing the read through uh, in Deb's backyard, we just had everybody around a picnic table doing read throughs, trying to punch up scripts and come up with stuff. And uh, we were all like, oh, what's a great line for Val to say? And I just remember Kaya so quickly just coming up with, like, use the fork. And everybody just, like, slow claps. That's, th- yeah. <laughs> that one won the day. Yeah. That line won the day. Yeah. yeah. Kudos to Kaya. Nice. And poor Rose used to be so alive, but by the end of the day, under those lights. <laughs> Look at how I dead know. it is. <laughs> and that line, that too. That was improvised, too. The, uh, the, the calling of Dick. And who is this singing now? Oh man, this is Adam Warrock. Uh, he is awesome. He is one of the most prolific nerdcore MCs out there. And he, uh, you know, he did our we like we shot our episode six in the spring or in the summer, and then we shot the rest of this in the fall. And I remember calling him, being like, "Hey man, can you um, would you mind doing a track for episode six? And he did, and I fucking love his track. Mm-hmm. Um, and then we called him again. And we're like, "Do you want to do something about Star Wars?" And he's like, "Yes." 100 percent and if you actually go and listen to the soundtrack song uh it's pretty wicked it's all about luke's epic journey through the three movies and yeah. it's it's subtle so you don't really know that it's actually about star wars until you get to the end of the song um he's really good i really like adam warrock what's I the be- name of it sorry sorry I, I became exposed to him uh through that uh that music mix that we put together last summer Yes. Oh, One yeah. of the songs was an Adam Warrock song. I don't remember what it, what it I was. I think it was from his Akira album. He did yes, a whole right. album of songs it's, that are specifically It's the one Akira. that we shot in Hyde Park where Val's just walking around listening to the Beach Boys. Summer playlist. Yeah, yeah, the summer playlist. And uh, I'd never heard of him before. And then the next time I heard of him, he was making music for us. I'm like, well, how did we get this guy? Oh, I, I, I found him on uh, Topless Robot posted that Akira one. So I went and downloaded the album and listened to it. And he's done albums on like X-Men, X-Factor, X-Force, like Doctor Who. He just covers everything that he loves. And he'll write a whole album about it. But it's not just an album from a generic standpoint. He'll write an album about like specific characters and how they're specifically feeling in specific moments. Love him, man. Adam Warrock. Awesome. Yeah, and Greg also made, they think, the backing track yes, for those. Yes, he definitely did. And um, uh, Greg is our music supervisor, and he did an amazing job this whole season, collecting soundtrack songs, composing original music for the show, with, uh, working with Waylon, who was also composing music for us, and then Greg would actually master everything as well. Yeah, we were really lucky. Uh, the music in our show is very strong, and uh, we're very, very happy to have the, such amazing, talented people. Sweet. Let's move on to episode three. Yeah. You guys should move on with us. Ooh. Don't Let's listen to us in episode three. Let's move on together. 